Hello and welcome to another outdoor yoga episode with me, Yogi Cecily. I am so honored and pleased to be here with you. This video is Twist and Bind, one of my favorite things to work on. And you'll see me start here just seated, twisting to my left with an inhale and an exhale, and then twisting to my right with an inhale and an exhale. Do this again to the left. I inhale through the center. I exhale, twist. My right hand is on my left knee and my left hand is back behind me. And then I will twist to the right, inhale and exhale, bringing the left hand over to the right knee and the right hand behind me. From the center, we'll do this again, a little bit of a twist to the left, but then I add a back bend. So I'm looking to the left, I back bend and forward fold. And again, lifting, back bending, and forward folding, back bending, inhaling, and forward folding. So this is getting the erector muscles in the spine and the TVA, the twisting muscles, the transverse abdominis. I twist to the right, inhale with a bit of a back bend, and exhale forward fold. Again, while twisted to the right, inhale with a back bend, exhale forward fold. And again, inhale with a bit of a back bend, gets the erector muscles in the spine, a little bit of a forward fold, gets the rectus abdominis. Boy, oh boy, and we do this once more, a little back bend, and then come to the center. All right, now I'm gonna place the hands behind my hips, lift my ribs up, look at the sky, inhale, and then add a little forward fold. Good, inhaling up. A little bit of a back bend, shoulders back, chest open, and exhaling forward fold. Again, I usually like to do things four or five times, so here, inhaling back, exhaling forward. I'm getting a very nice forward fold here because I am sitting up on a bit of a blanket, so I would recommend that for folks. If you have trouble sitting in these cross ankle, cross leg, what we call a tailor position in yoga, I do recommend adding a little bit of a blanket. All right, from here now, still seated. I am going into eagle's pose, an eagle wrap, with my right arm on top of my left and squeezing up and down in the bicep curl. I take it over to the right side, my right arm on top of my left in an eagle wrap. So now I'm adding twisting the arms with twisting the rib cage, warming up the rotator cuff. All right, now taking this eagle in the forward position, looking up and looking down, I wanna keep these eagle wraps. Working the rotator cuff in the shoulders with the seated rectus abdominis. Crisscrossing eagle and not waggling the eagle pose. This is so important too, to take your eagle arms and waggle them, just warms up the rotator cuff. Now going the other way, waggling over to the left. If this is hard for you, um, I would try a little bit of it every other day. If your rotator cuff is weak, you'll definitely want to warm up your rotator cuff doing this style of eagle work. See, now the left arm is on top and I'm doing the waggling back and forth in eagle. And you will see in me, I do have scoliosis and that makes the left uh, sorry, the right side of my body, a little bit dense. Uh, so the rotator cuff and the subscapularis and the scapular uh, muscles are a little bit tight on my right side. Okay, so now we've changed the legs, put the other arm, leg in the front. There, tuck that in. And then we're switching legs, right leg in front, and then on the top, a little forward fold. Well, this is warming up the lotus pose. You know, twisting and binding. 
you're going to be in Lotus. There's just no way out of it. <laughs> and so how to warm up the ankle, the knee, and the hip socket. See, now just bringing the left leg on top in Lotus. Breathing, and can I tell you, it is so nice being outside also. Uh, uh, to have a nice, uh, pleasant, exercise routine outside, maybe working on some specialty poses. Instead of always working on your sun salutes, this twist and bind that I'm uh, laying down for you all here, it shows you how relaxed and comfortable I am in my own yard working on twist and bind and lotus. Well, now, I just want to get the leg moving into lotus on its own. I am helping my right leg with my left hand a little bit, but this type of mobility conditioning is what many, many people need. So if you could just take this exercise and just do this one every day, you want to sit, open up the leg, and then fold it into your lotus, mostly on its own volition. So taking the leg out to the side and folding it in. My students know I say all the time, your legs are really kind of lazy and uh, are searching for your hands to bring your legs into the position, but really our legs need to be mobile and strong enough to get to these positions on their own. So if they're not, this type of drill you want to do, well, almost every day, just sit, unfold, 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 and fold. All right. Now, just going to turn to the side, straighten out the legs. Oh, take a little forward fold. Working on a pose, this is twisting over my right knee elevated. So, this is in your Marichyasana category of poses. Just sitting up and getting the knee up crossing my left arm over so that my left hand grabs my left ankle. That's, that's the kind of thing that we really want to go for. If it's not there, don't worry about it. <laughs> Can I tell you, just don't even worry about it. Uh, which is, again, the reason why I'm laying down this video is so that you can see my personal process into going deeper, which means you could start on a, a, a tighter range. You see, this is my personal process. See how I'm lifting the leg. I want to twist, I want to cross over, I want to grab the right foot, but then also a little bit lift, uh, grab the left foot, but I also want to lift the left leg a little bit off. Okay, nice forward fold goes there. Oh, feels so good. <laughs> oh, we're gonna face the other way. If I weren't doing a video, uh, I probably wouldn't face the other way. I would just do the other side, but I turn around for you all to see. So this is my, my uh, left knee coming up. I lift and arch the back. I cross the arm over and start to get that knee to adduct inward, but also getting your ribs to rotate around to the left, extending the arm. Can you see in this process, I don't go for the deeper position right off the bat. I add what I call mobility drills or flossing. Your physical therapist might call it flossing, moving in and out of the range, and then moving some of the other bones around. See, so I place my hand on my back, get a, oh, a little bit of a back bend with that twist. Twisting in your TVA is sort of also back bending. And then I grab the leg and lift it. That is not easy. But for the poses that I'm going for today, um, I want to add just a lot of creativity in the mobility drills. Yeah, which is what I'm showing you here is like, well, what's creativity in a mobility drill? Well, it's going for your binding, but then seeing what also you can move. <laughs> what else can move? Oh, okay, this is getting the arm around the back which is necessary for half-bound lotus. 
I want you all to notice in this video, uh, I just isolate parts of it. I just isolate getting my hand, my arm, my left arm around my back and touching the inside of my right hip socket. Grabbing the foot in the half bound lotus, that's, you know, extra sauce. So sometimes just practice getting the arm around, you know? Just say, well, can my arm go around? Then just lifting up and working in a leg stretch. Once again, getting the arm around, trying to place it, and then again around the back. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. See, and then the left hand is, is grabbing the left foot. See, that's the extra sauce. Can you actually get into a half bound lotus? But practice the arm mobility. If you just back up a little bit on this video, I'm going to do the other side. Notice I worked on half lotus. I worked on lotus first, then worked on getting the arm around the back. Now we're working on getting the two things together. Everybody can't get two things together. So separate them and work on them separately. That's okay. All right, here we go, swinging around to the other side. Seated here. You will notice a little forward fold. That, that just keeps my back loose. There is an element of twisting and binding that requires an efficient forward fold. You see, it, it almost requires the ability of the body to not only fold together, but also back bend. Every time I twist, there is a very small back bend. You see, this is my right arm coming around my back and that, that scoliosis over my right shoulder, just uh, those muscles are a bit bunched up, I will tell you, they're kind of bunchy. And those of you with scoliosis, you will totally understand. So you see me kind of waggling this side. I did not do this with the left arm, sort of waggling and etching it to get it to cross over. Okay. I take the right leg on top. There. Work, work into the foot crossing, again, separating things out. Some people might be able to get their arm over their back, but they can't get their foot in the right position. So here I am going, all right, let me get the foot. Now notice, notice how my foot, my right foot is in my left hip pocket. Uh, the foot cannot be at the knee or over the knee or on the knee. It has to really be up at the hip pocket. Otherwise, your arm can't get around to it. So that is the half bound lotus with the right leg crossing over, add a little forward fold. Feels so, so, so good. Let me turn around and let's come on up in, I, in, my, in my own personal work, which we don't get to do in a class, which is why here it is again, why I put these video down for you all is to encourage you to have a personal practice where you are sorting out some of these problems on your own. You can follow this video, but as you're following this video, make up your own stuff, you know? I mean, get in there and, and make up something where you feel you're getting super fluidy, super um, buttery. This is the prayer position over the right leg, which we would need before a binding. And this binding would turn into a flamenco pose, so you can uh, look up flamenco pose. But again, I can do the binding. In my personal work, sometimes I don't do the full pose. I just want to get a deeper twist. Here my little body circles getting real super buttery. Going around to the other side, a little forward and back. These are the things we can't really always do in class. But if you have uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of your own personal time, pick an isolated effort. This is twisting and binding. 
It's a little less than 40 minutes of twisting and binding. So this is the prayer position over my left leg. Now, I just want a deeper, mm, a more delicious twist. And you see the way I'm adding, looking around with my eyes, uh, uh, turning my head forward and back, adding, adding additional movements in the arm instead of going directly to the pose. That is one of the secret sauces to mobility. And I'll put a link in this video to Ido Portal. He's a Brazilian mover, jiu-jitsu person. Uh, and I really adore his practice because he's like, well, why go directly to a move, to anything? <laughs> you know? Uh, first figure out everything that your body can do and then choose choose what you would like to do. And that's what you see me doing here in this twisting. <sighs> and binding over, trying to get just a deeper, deeper twist each time in the lunge. I come out, I almost always will give a bit of a oh, delicious back bend. Back bending and twisting go together. So I could call this a warm-up for backbending. Hmm? As you're watching the video, there are some practitioners that would actually counsel you not to put twisting and backbending together. I agree with that um, because there's a lot of backbending in the twisting. As you can see me here, I'm really leaning out and away getting the oblique abdominals involved. And so if you're not sure uh, I wouldn't necessarily follow up twisting with backbending unless you're just an advanced practitioner and you want to move on to that work after your twisting work. All right, here we go. I'm going to step here my left foot forward. Yeah, so good. And get the left shoulder down on the inside. This, this binding, this is the inside binding, is a huge requirement for Bird of Paradise. And, and, but I don't want Bird of Paradise. What I want to do is I want to see what is the range of motion of my torso once the binding is applied. My teacher used to say that binding should work like a rope, like, like a hemp rope. So the cool thing about a rope is that it's very strong when it's pulled tight, but if you loosen a little bit, it, it will, first it will loosen, but then when you loosen and tighten and loosen and tighten, it's, it's, it's bind actually gets uh, deeper. And that's sort of, sort of what, you, what you want. Once you get the bind, you want to move your body around inside of the binding and discover what density is there for you. Okay, a nice child's pose breaks things up. Moving on from there uh, to forward folds. Now dig it, sweet children, you're following the video. Please remember to like and subscribe to YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might see parts of it on Instagram. So YouTube, you found, found me on YouTube, I'm Yogi Cecily. On Instagram, I'm Cecily underscore Yogi, and I will put all of those links in the description of this YouTube. Please like and subscribe, it helps me develop the page. You notice here I am working on a twisted forward fold, and now we're in the twisted chair. Well, we do not get enough twisted chair in most classes. And even if you do a twisted chair, you're probably not left there long enough to develop the type of density required to twist. The idea here is that my left rib should be touching my right thigh, my right knee should be inside of my left armpit. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and I try for a little bit of a low lasana or, or a um, mala, mala asana, mala around the legs. That's, oh boy, pretty hard. Just getting the arms to extend 
with the left hand flat on the floor. A lot of students will extend the arms, but they can't get the low hand to touch the floor. I usually say no sense in extending the arms if you, if you can't touch the floor. All right, so now working from a Parjvottanasana, forward folding, and this could be interpreted as a half binding in a rotated triangle pose. So the legs are straight, and my right foot is forward, my right arm went over my back, and I tried to get the right fingertips inside the left hip socket, and then I go to my triangle pose. Why not do the standard poses? You see, we've been doing already 15 minutes or so of all this twisting. Let's see, you know, just see how it works over a standard pose. I'm gonna go through a baby prasarita and move things around for a moment. Turn around to the right side and rest. <sighs> you know, when you have a personal practice, the timing it's just marvelous, the, the timing. You can take your time. It's, it's a personal journey, isn't it? So if you think of your practice like a mountain, uh, a Mount Everest, you have your way of starting, getting to base camp. You, you know what the peak of the mountain is for you. And you set aside 30 to 40 minutes to work towards the peak of that mountain, not just going pose to pose, right? Especially once you're past being a beginner, the idea that you're going to just do a pose and that that pose alone is gonna move you forward in your practice, it won't. You have to say, here's my chair pose, and now let me move things around in the chair pose. Let me see if this arm will go around my back and then extending the top arm looking skyward. Look at how the right hand is flat on the ground with the fingertips turned in reverse. This is showing rotation in the arms, rotation in the torso, right? And I'm going to step forward, then step back. Now the left leg is forward in Parsvottanasana, staggered stance. My students know I call it staggered stance, so there's not a lot of confusion. It's not a split. It's not prasarita. It's a staggered stance, like a triangle pose is a staggered stance. Some people will call it pyramid. Okay. Notice how the right hand crosses over the left foot completely, and then my belly button is facing you, and my nose faces the sky. This is such a delicious pose. We really don't specialize in the rotated poses enough. And so I'm going to just take a little forward fold, relax everything there. Can I tell you if you're following this video, I really uh, don't have notes. I'm not following scripted poses. I work on one thing, then I take a pause, and then I go, well, the whole category that we're looking at is twisting and binding. So I'm going, well, obviously here's our twisted crow. Now so many people work on the crow pose, but what about the twisted crow? What I want you all to understand here is that it's my legs have twisted. Look how I'm looking forward. My arms are in chaturanga and it's my lower body that's twisted. My, my chest isn't twisted, my ribs aren't twisted. So, I take my hands, uh, oh, uh, this is a binding, sorry my dears, this is a binding, a mala asana, a little binding, which works counter to the twisted crow over the right. I come up and breathe. You, you might think that I'm facing you in this twisted crow, but I'm not. I'm facing the top of the mat. So to that regard, it's my, it's my lower body that is twisted. That's why my knees are facing you. Yeah, and my arms, my chest, and my shoulders work like chaturanga. And then notice how I twist and lift my feet. My chest is level. That means it's the lower body that's twisting. This is the part that 
many, 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 many people um, miss. Then a little counter pose is a half mala asana. I feel so good. Oh, twisting and binding. Well, there's your binding. So the twisted crow is twisting. The mala asana, half mala asana, is the binding. <sighs> Forward folding feels so good after twisting and binding. Now this next bit of work is um, hard for some people. Oh my goodness. <sighs> it is eagle. Now I like to tease my eagle and just... I'm sweating. <laughs> and just sort of tease into eagle by starting with what would be an ashtanga uh, half bound lotus, just bringing the foot up. Can I can I tell you? It's very difficult to bind the foot if the foot isn't up as high as the hip socket. You see. And then standing in balance. So this pose, I have this pose, and I'm just using this pose actually to get ready for another one. <laughs> if that makes sense, if you're watching the video. Look how I want to twist my arms and bind my arms. So we do a lot of arms overhead inhale, but I wanted to cross them and get a little wiggling. You're gonna, you're gonna see me wiggle a lot at the top and in between some of these poses. All right, so here, here it is, the binding. We already warmed up getting the arm around the back. I want to tell you, I, I have a bit of an arch in my back. It is almost impossible to get the arm around your back if it is rounded. So uh, I'm not showing that in this video. I'm not showing the side view in this video, but if you wish to get your arm around your back, you have to, well, you have to lift and get your ribs out of the way. If you get your ribs out of the way, that's a little bit of a hyperextension in the back. Hope you're following around. I want you to keep following. If you need to press pause and come back to the rest of the video, I recommend it. Uh, I, I like to do, do a flow form in my videos and not do a lot of edits. And why is that? Because I really want my students to see how I personally work. I, I could just show you perfection and say, oh, just cross your foot over. But that's not what I do in my personal work and so uh, that that's sort of cheating just to show you the finished pose. Now you can tell I'm working on ego because I'm internally rotating my legs. See the knees crossing over and doing a little a little knee waggling dance. All right, it's the left leg on top. Ah. And by waggling things around, can I tell you also, challenges your balance. And eagle's pose is not an easy balance. So why not do a little mobility drill, waggle things around and, you know, look at, look at how the hips sway. I'm letting the hips sway and uh, taking the arms out. Okay. If the left leg is on top, the right arm is on top. Uh, my students, those of you watching will notice, remember the scoliosis is on my right side. So look how high that right shoulder is. I know that it's high. So if you look at that and say, oh, she's out of alignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very few of us are perfect in yoga. We see a lot of perfect videos. But uh, here it is again. I like to just show my students how I work. I am very aware that my right side is out of alignment. Getting the arms in the wrap is super hard. That right arm does not want to cross over, but at least the right shoulder is lower. <laughs> there is a forward folding eagle. If you have trouble with eagle, you probably have a lot of external rotation in your legs. So like when you sit in butterfly, your legs just go bloop, they flop right out in butterfly. So if that is you, you have to have some patience in your eagle. It'll take a long time for your legs to be able to adduct that way. 
Well, I don't know why I'm showing you this pose. I cannot do it. This is pasasana. I'm showing you to you because when I do my personal work, well, why work on things that you can already do? <laughs> and, and that is something that Ido Portal also says. He says, well, we practice what we can't do. That makes sense. Uh, I'm almost, my fingers are almost together, but it's such a tricky balance. You see that I fell out of it. I'm gonna go to the other side. The other side's just gonna be impossible because of the condition of my right shoulder. There, There's no way my right arm is gonna get under my shin bones, but um, I'm gonna work on it anyway. And I'm just gonna show you all like, Wow, look at the imbalance this lady has. It's like her right arm doesn't go where her left one goes. But you know, we gotta do our work anyway, folks. We gotta do our work anyway. I'm not happy with that. Oh, I'm so glad to be done. Like, oh, let me get to forward fold. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we, we just gotta work on things, even if, the, even if it's not happening. And what better place to work on those things than in your home. So I also wanted to show you these outdoor videos. I think I might get a couple more before summer 2023 is over. Uh, for me to work outside, it has to be about 85 degrees. <laughs> if it is cold, forget it. All right, I'm showing you Madi Chiasana A. This is a pose that I can do, so I'm actually using it as a finisher I tell students all the time, the, the binding is one thing, but getting your face down to the extended leg is, finishes the pose. So I'll say again, if you need to work on your forward fold, then you need to work on your forward fold. For, forget the binding. We can work on the binding in other poses. So notice how I push my body weight up and notice how my ribs, my back, my shoulder go below the height of the knee. I'm showing it to you this way because uh, a lot of people think that the arm has to bend around. So I wanted to show it to you with a straight arm. See how that arm is just laying out there straight. Then the other arm can find it and then the elbows bend. Now, now I'm going to bend the elbows a bit so I can get a deeper compression. This works the ab, stretches the lower back. A lot of people, their abs will go into spasm. You know, they're just, oh, their, their abdominal wall will just spasm right up because it's such a deep contraction. So whereas some twisting has a bit of back bending, you'll notice that that twisting has, with the forward fold, will contract the abs. Oh my goodness. Look at me just lying here. I'm just like, oh God, this was such a tough workout. Just 30 minutes. It's killer. Halasana plow goes nicely with the back bending. Um, for some people, uh, it goes nicely with the, with the twisting. I'm sorry, it goes nicely with the twisting. But some people, your back might go into a spasm, so that might not be the counter stretch for you. I'm just showing this for you all to show you working in the lotus because it's twisting and binding video. The way that the legs bind is in lotus and in eagle. I count those as leg bindings. We usually think of bindings with just the arms. So I'm alternating drawing one foot into lotus, getting the other foot with the hand and then breathing, getting into a little bit of a dead bug. Breathe and change. Look how I'm using the top leg. I'm gonna use the top leg to get the bent knee in closer, come on closer to me. And then swinging that top leg around. Each time the top leg swings around, it pulls the bent knee in closer. All right. Well, using the hands, fitting my feet into lotus. You could just stay right there. If lotus is excruciating for you, but you want to develop it, uh, doing it on your back, even holding onto your ankles with your hands and just staying there. You have to stay there and let, let the ligaments 
Um, ligaments don't really stretch, so I'm gonna say you have to let the ligaments move and then finishing it with the shoulder stand lotus combination. Well, if you're into meditation, this is a fantastic meditation. You know, it has a throat lock, Jalandhara. It has the lotus lock. Yeah, and I probably could have stayed there a little longer. I'm gonna come up, keep my lotus. Well, once you get the lotus on your back, you'll just, mm, you'll just fall to it in the forward fold. Just using gravity. Nice, stretch the legs out. Massage, massage the legs. This session is coming to a close. I'm going to lie back and rest. Ooh, just let a little bit of energy drain. Take my arms back and breathe. <sighs> I'm actually looking at the sky. This day, the sky was beautiful blue. Always give yourself ample resting. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. I am Cecily underscore Yogi on Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn as well as Cecily Guest is my last name and my website can find me 